Hello everyone. It is time for this year's seed start. I've got my garden blue plant all filled out. And today is March 1st. So I'm going to start the pepper and beet seeds. This is my little reminder sheet. Just makes it easy. I keep the seeds that I bought previously in glass jars stored in the refrigerator, keeps them fresh. So I've pulled out the pepper seeds and the beet seeds. I prepare some Ziploc bags, some folded pieces of paper towel. I have a spray bottle with just regular water in it. I wash my hands and clean the counter. I pre-moisten one of the paper towels. These are giant Marconi sweet pepper seeds. I fold the paper towel over, moisten it some more, slide it into the paper plastic bag, leave a little bit of air in there. Seal it up. These are beet seeds. This helps the seeds stick to the paper towel. So they stay in place when you slide them into the Ziploc bag. Spray a little bit more water in there. Seal it up. And I've plugged in my electric heat mat and it's hooked up to this thermostat and I set it between 75 and 85 degrees. I like to set it at 81. I take a towel, place it in the middle. This is kind of a buffer insulation. The pepper and beet seeds go right in the middle. I take the thermostat probe put it right in between and then I take a second towel put it on top this is like a blanket okay here are beet seeds after just four days of germination these are called rose pots and these are three inch square pots. This is a 16 quart Sterilite container. I like these Sterilite boxes because these fit in perfectly. And also the orange pots fit in nice and snug. And I'm gonna mix up a batch of soil. Take one of my containers from last year I dump it in a wheelbarrow and mix it up. This year I'm going to use some Light Warrior Seed Starter Mix from Fox Farm. And I'm going to add some earthworm castings, just a little bit. And I gently stir it up. I use the end of a spoon to create little holes. I set them up in my little cabinet here. It's got a grow light. Here are cayenne and sweet banana pepper seeds after six days of germination.
Here are giant Marconi pepper seeds. Sometimes the seedling root will get intertwined into the paper towel. So I'll take a flathead screwdriver and kind of break free the seedling. It's okay to leave a little bit of the paper towel on the seedling and I bury it maybe about a half inch below the surface because as it rises up it'll shed the, the seed shell. It's March 8th. It's time to start the lettuce, kale, collards, basil, ground cherry, and tomato seeds. My favorite tomato variety is Cupid Grape, and I buy these online. I also buy some at the store. Here's Walmart's Garden Center. They have a nice seed display. It's fun to just browse the seed packets. And I've noticed if you look around the store, usually hidden in a different aisle are these seeds that are only 20 cents per pack. One variety I recommend is California Wonder Bell Peppers. Those are really good. So I do the usual, wet the paper towel. These are Cupid Grape Tomatoes. I kind of Pick them up with my fingers, arrange them nicely. These are Roma tomatoes. I do the same thing with the rest of the seeds. These are collard and kale seeds. A good way to gauge the proper amount of water is if you turn the bag, there'll be a little tiny puddle. You don't want any more than that. And I put all the seeds onto the heat mat. Here are kale and collard seeds after just three days in the Ziploc. I really do find this to be the most efficient way to start seedlings. It takes maybe a total of 10 minutes to put all the seeds in Ziplocs and onto the heat mat. And you can visually observe as the seeds sprout and germinate inside the plastic bags. And this is lettuce after three days in the bag. And it's a more efficient use of space because you fill the exact amount of containers of soil and you're pretty much guaranteed that every seedling is going to grow into a plant. Here are tomato seeds after six days in the Ziploc bag.
Here's lettuce, kale, and collards after three days in the soil. Here's Marconi pepper seeds and beets. Been in the soil for 10 days. And these are tomatoes after one week in the soil. And in the back are peppers. And under the fluorescent shop light, here are the beets, kale, collards, and lettuce. And here are Marconi peppers. So here is my lighting setup. Got a TS600. Mars Hydro LED light. This is new for this year. So far, I really like it. I can tell I can keep the plants maybe like six inches under the light. And I can tell that they're growing really well. And then these two lights are just regular four foot fluorescent shop lights. And something new for this year is I've hung a fan because wind will keep the stems strong, keeps the plant short, the stems strong from the wind blowing them around. I've also got a fan on this cabinet also. And something else new is I have a power strip with individual switches. So I'll turn the lights on at seven in the morning and then at about 10.30 at night, I'll turn everything off. And I use the lids from the Sterilite containers, kind of prop them up. It's kind of like a light block. And I keep this cabinet door kind of shut. I leave this little gap right here. And it creates airflow up and down. Inside this cabinet, it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. On days where the weather is kind of decent, I will bring the plants outside into the greenhouse. I usually bring them out at about noon. Today it is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And inside the greenhouse, it is currently 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And also something new for this year is I've run an extension cord out to this fan. And it gives the stems some strength from the natural wind blowing them around. My basic method for watering is you don't want the soil too wet or too dry. So I'll use a spray bottle and spray right around the base of the plant a couple times a day. And this is mostly important when the plants are really small. And then as the plants get a little bigger and you notice the soil is drying out, I'll use a cup and just water it a little bit. And at about six o'clock, when the sun is setting, I'll move all the plants back in under the lights. Today is March 22nd, and it's time to start the peas and the corn. This year I'm gonna try jackpot corn. And these are super sugar snap peas. I'm gonna put them in Ziplocs with paper towels. and these will go onto the heat mat. Here's corn after three days.
In between planting seedlings, I keep a little cup of water, dip my fingers in there before I pick up the next one. Here are the peas after three days. I like this because you get all the good seeds. You don't waste your time with seeds that are slow or won't germinate. Here's the beets, lettuce, tomatoes at two weeks in the soil. And today is the first day that I will fertilize with the fish emulsion. I use this 511 fish emulsion, one tablespoon in a gallon of water. And from this moment forward, I'll fertilize once per week. These are pepper plants, yellow bell, and banana peppers, and cayenne. Here's the lettuce. Marconi peppers, kale and collards, and beets. Here's corn, tomatoes at three weeks, and here's some more beets. It's a warm sunny day, about 70 degrees, so I'll bring them out here on the front walkway. Today is April 7th, and I transplant the kale, beets, and lettuce outside. Something kind of interesting is I tried a new variety of lettuce called Butterhead, but compared to the Red Sail and Black Seeded Simpson, there's like no comparison how much healthier and vigorous this is. I like to water the plants right before I transplant because it helps them slide out of the containers easy. These little pieces of lattice help block the heat of the sun. I like to fluff up the soil one last time. I've learned it's essential to stake the kale and the collards because the wind can sometimes blow these things around and damage the stems. 
So this keeps them propped up. It's April 11th, and these are the pepper plants. They're about five weeks in the soil. I keep the Mars Hydro light about six inches from the top. It really works good. You can see how dense the foliage is. And here are Marconi peppers under the four foot fluorescent shop light. These are basil and ground cherries. And here are the tomato plants. These are four weeks in the soil. And with the four foot fluorescent shop light, you can let the plants actually touch the light but in general I keep the leaves about an inch from the bulbs so I just brought the plants outside and this is when I will trim the tomato leaves because the plants are getting big enough that they're getting root bound and also when I plant the tomatoes in the ground, I'll bury them a little deeper. That'll give the plant a little less stress because I'm gonna transplant these in about four days. Here's all the leaves I removed. Today is April 15th. The peppers are five and a half weeks in the soil. And the tomatoes are four and a half weeks in the soil. I checked the weather forecast and there isn't any freezing weather. And today I transplant the tomatoes, peppers, and all the other plants. Got notches cut into the edge of the bed every 12 inches. And I connect the lines with this putty knife and create a square foot grid. I plant peppers, one per square foot. For some of the plants I'm using this stuff called Mycos, Mycorrhizal. I fill a bucket with some water to rinse off the dirt on my hands. And I stake the tomatoes to protect them from damage from wind gusts. I use these things called mini binder clips 
And I use them to lock together the pepper cages and it makes a one sturdy solid structure. And I zip tie the tomato cages to these iron posts and it keeps the cages wind damage proof. So I got everything all planted out. So this bed is jackpot corn. This bed and this bed are identical. The front row is yellow bell. The middle row is giant Marconi sweet peppers. And then there's cupids, two per bed. And then got kale, collards. These are sweet banana peppers. More kale and collards. And then in a few weeks, I'll plant pole beans, cucumbers, and more pole beans. Here's the hex bed. Got beets and lettuce in the front edge. Got two sweet banana peppers. This is a cayenne hot pepper, and a Cupid grape tomato. Here's the garage containers. Got another cayenne, sweet banana pepper, and three Romas. They're called Mariana Roma. And these are the overflow plants. I always start a few extras, just in case something bad happens to one of my other plants, I'll have a replacement. And with one of the extras, I'm planting it right here. This is a Cupid grape tomato. It only gets a few hours of sunshine per day, but it will produce tomatoes. These are the Aunt Molly's ground cherries. And these are the Emerald Towers basil. So we've got two Aunt Molly's ground cherries. We've got super sugar snap peas, basil, beets, red sale, and black seeded Simpson lettuce. And these itsy bitsy tiny ones are butterhead. And before the day is over, I'm gonna start some radish seeds. Radish seeds germinate really easy, so I'll just put them in a dark drawer. Okay, it's four days later. And I'd like to plant the radishes along the outside edge of these containers. <laughs> 